Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys can see me good because I have to cut the ring light off. My eyes are bothering me today. I am so tired. But today I'm going to be finally running my brand new MC1501 from Macoma. This is the single head 15 needle embroidery machine that I just got. I have a full unboxing video on it. So if you want to check it out, you can check that video out. It's linked down below and it'll be linked at the end of the video as well. But today, some of you have been asking me about it, and I'm going to be finally making my first t-shirt. I had a few little issues with threading the machine and getting everything set up, but I'm ready to rock and roll now. So, I'm going to be doing my first t-shirt, and I want to share it with you all, and I'm hoping and praying everything goes well. So, go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel because I'm bringing you all behind the scenes of my business. I'm bringing you DIYs, I'm bringing you crafts, I'm bringing you tips on how to grow your business and everything else in between. And now we're adding embroidery in it. So, if you think this video is for you, if you think my channel can help you out with your business, go ahead and join the fam, join the fun. So, let's rock and roll on this new Rakoma MT1501. but today I'm ready to do my first t-shirt I was saving it for you all I've only practiced a little bit like on just the backing alone just backing alone but today I'm ready to take that step and put something on the shirt so for all of you who have been wondering about embroidery or you're just starting out if you're thinking about it hopefully this video will help you out I am so excited to start my embroidery business and I can't wait but I wanted to save it and record it and share it with you all, my first t-shirt. But I have the MT1501 single head 15 needle embroidery machine from Rakoma. So if you're wondering about their embroidery machines, you can definitely follow my journey. If you're wondering about purchasing, you can always click the link down below and they will help you out with financing all your questions and choosing the right machine for you. So without further ado, I am gonna be doing in the spirit of Christmas, of course, a nice little Christmas design. I'm going to show you how you print these out. I'm going to show you where you can get some digitized files from already because you know your girl ain't digitizing yet, but that will be coming soon. So I just picked up a nice little simple design. I'm going to put it on a shirt. I hope everything goes well. This is my first shirt, my first shirt. So I'm open for all helpful tips because I know people out there are embroidering already. So if you know anything about this machine, if you know different tips to make things easier, go ahead and put them down in the comments to help your girl out. So I'm going to cut the ring light off so that way you can see the screen much better. That ring light is so bright, it'd be killing my eyes. So I'm going to cut on the machine. Now, I already transferred my file from the computer from Chroma onto the USB drive. So you do have to transfer all your files onto a USB drive. Once you have them on a USB drive, then you'll transfer them onto the machine right here. So here it is already up. This is the file I'm going to do. Simple, nice little Christmas shirt with Believe. Now, this is the paper. I forgot what they actually call this, the sheet, but this is, you know, all the information that has your design on it. It tells you the measurements. So this design that I'm doing is going to be about seven and a half um, wide by about four, a little less than four inches in height. So nice just for the front of the t-shirt. It has your color charts where you can choose your colors. Of course, I won't be using blue because when I looked at the design, the belief was in black. So that's what I'm going to go with. So I'm going to choose my own colors, but it can tell you which colors are for each thing. Now I got this from, y'all know my website that I love, Creative Fabrica. I always talk about the site. It has everything. So I know some of you do it, use it for tumblers, use it for like backdrops, layouts, templates, all different things, but they have embroidery files as well. So you can definitely check out that link down below. So I got this from that website. So now what I'm gonna do, after I have my file um, in the Rakoma machine, I am going to now select my colors. I gotta select my colors. So now I'm going by this. It has four colors. My believe I want to be in black, so my black is on 
two. Now you can, of course, you know, correlate the numbers with the spool colors at up top. You see how where my, my colors are up there? They're not correlating with this. I didn't go ahead and change that because I never know when I'm going to change my colors. All you do is just look to see what color your, um, your thread is on and just go with that. So example, my white is in the one spot. So instead of it being red, if I need white, I would just click the number one. So since my black, up there if you can see up there behind the white is in two now i'll go ahead and click two for the first color so that's for my believe the next color so now the next color for number two is for like the santa hat and everything and of course i want that in red my red is in three so i'm gonna go with three so i am hoping that that is good this will be my first time selecting the colors and making sure that um, everything comes out nice. So now I'm going to make sure I have the right hoop size. You hit design set to select your hoops. You hit over here. So it'll tell you your last one that you have and the last hoop size that I did was size B. So I know that's not correct. And I believe I need size D because this is seven and a half inches wide. It starts to move. And now it puts it in place. So, wow, D is not even big enough. D is not big enough. So, I got to go to the next size, E. Yes, it is E. E is the square. I'm sorry. So, E should be per. Yes, that's the perfect fit. So, E is the one that I need. That's the, like, little square one that I have. So, I'm going to go with that size. I'm going to hit OK. All I got to do now is hoop my design. Okay, so this is the shirt that I want to use. Of course, this is um, a V-neck, so I don't know. I tried to look, and I've never seen anyone hoop a V-neck. So I want my design on a V-neck. So I'm using it. It's a, um, this is a Next Level Ideal T-shirt. This is the size that I need. This is the size that I was going to do, you know, like a sample on, but I said, you know what, this is just a bummy t-shirt for practice, an old t-shirt. I had already hooped this one, but this is just so small. I didn't want to do that. I can practice on that later. I just want to go ahead and be bold and try to use this one. So I'm going to um, attempt to hoop this v-neck. Y'all let me know if I'm doing this right in the comments down below. So now this was just some backing that somebody had gave me because I didn't have enough um, cutaway in the beginning so that's why all my designs had to be like this because it came with some you know some sample backings um and then i went and bought the tearaway and the tearaway wasn't thick enough for you know t-shirts everyone was telling me that you know i need cutaway so i did go buy this i went and bought this one this is my first one um i got it on sale at joann's it was like like $1.99 a yard or something like that. And I bought a bunch of yards, you know, um, at, at Joann's Fabric. And so this one is the, I believe it's the Pelon. Yeah. So this one is the Pelon Cutaway. I believe I'm saying it right. Pelon, Pelon, Pelon. I bought this one for the Cutaway. So I haven't opened that up yet. I'm just using this one that someone gave me. So this one is really thick. I'm not sure what the weight of this one is. So let's us go ahead and try to hoop this design because I do want my design like right up here. So we shall see how this comes out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this underneath. Again, this is my very first time embroidering a t-shirt. So I know that this has to go towards the bottom. Well, now all of the other ones, they're directly in the center. This one is off to the side, so I'm assuming that's still, you know, okay. I'm going to try to get this as straight as I can because I'm going to be mad if it's crooked. That looks straight. So, of course, I have to put this underneath. This does take some getting used to some learning making sure that it's nice and tight making sure that it's straight i've seen some people using those mighty hoops but those things are expensive so until my business starts booming she will not be investing in that just yet 
we will be using the ones that came with the machine. So I have my backing covered all the way, making sure that it's covering all sides. That's the number one thing. I wanna make sure it's covering all sides. My opening right here is where it goes into the machine. So now I just need to make sure it lines up, making sure my sh shirt is straight. Some people say don't pull it once it's in. I'm supposed to be in Hawaii right now, but instead I'm in here hooping shirts. <laughs> I gave up my vacation for my son. It was paid for and everything, but I'm going somewhere else, taking him somewhere else because I could not take him to Hawaii. And that's how I hoop my first shirt. That's good enough for me. Like I said, I'm practicing. This is my shirt. It's going to be mine. Now let's check the back without taking it out. We just going to rock and roll and see how that is. We're just going to rock and roll. I don't know. I'm trying to see if that's tight enough. Am I overthinking it? Okay. That's the shirt. I have it hooped. I'm hoping that's straight enough. Because I don't know. I can't really tell right now. But let's go on over to the machine. And it goes right in here. Clips in here. Just like that. So now first, I'm going to push this up a little bit. Just because I don't want my, um, I don't want my design all the way down here. I need my design to come up a little bit because it's a v-neck so this will be my first time doing that so i'm going to see if i can position it correctly so that should be good let's go with that so now i'm going to trace my design so if i hit this button this traces out my design i want to make sure that it all fits within the parameters of the actual hoop if it does not fit in the hoop then I have to change the hoop size, but this should be the right hoop size. So I'm going to hit that button and trace it out. This gives me an outline of where the design is going to go. And it, I can make sure that that needle isn't going to hit on the sides. I'm following the first hoop. It uses that one to outline. And now there's another button with the heart shape. If I hit that one, that gives me a more detailed, um, that this is giving me just a, um, a parameter. This is just a square outline. This one that I just did the trace, it just puts everything in box form. But this one, when you hit the heart button, it actually traces the actual image. So you can see it more detailed to make sure that your design is gonna be within the parameters. So I'm gonna hit that one. And now it will trace the entire thing. So this is a good tool to do because they told me, you know, you have to watch where that needle is. You want to make sure that everything stays within the borders of it. See where the design is actually going to go on your shirt. Okay, so we're in the good, we're in the parameters. We are in the parameters. I'm good to go. Let's get some light on you. Today, we're just gonna rock and roll. So guys, I am about to hit start for the very first time. So I'm gonna hit start and we're gonna see what happens. Now, I have my speed set to 650, no, 660. So you know, this, the, it can go faster, it can go slower, but because this is the first time, I'm gonna run it at a speed of 660. And we're going to see what happens. Here we go, guys.
just to say okay it's you know i'll come back i guess i had a thread break it stopped so where is the black let's see what happened here black was number two so yep i have a thread break come on now now i gotta this is this this happens so now i gotta put it back through and we're gonna I have to snip that little piece. See, I sped it up. I shouldn't have sped it up. I don't know if that would have happened had I not sped it up. The time I increased it, thread break. Okay, so I'm gonna hit start and hopefully it's gonna pick up right where it left off. And I'm gonna take this back down to 710. Your girl need to slow this thing down. speed of 710 see that I don't like it so Really centered. Now you guys can see 
up top. Okay, your girl did good with center in the shirt. doesn't show up that good because the shirt is white. So you see the ones are grayed out, those it didn't do. So now it's doing the next one. when it's complete and okay let's take it out and let's look at it okay so i'm gonna take it out ah wait i gotta cut right oh my god i forgot all about that <laughs> i gotta cut it on the thread what about the backing what about the okay so that cuts automatically oh child i was about to pull all the thread out so that's it that came out pretty much centered. Let's unhoop it and see how it looks out. Okay, so that is the design. I thought it would have been a little bit more white. So we got to cut away all the little stragglies. But let's go ahead and unhoop it. Unhoop it. Did I say that right? Loosen that up. And I'm hoping it didn't leave any marks. I know I've heard people talk about the marks that it leaves on the shirts. Take that out. Let's take a look at the back as well. You know, for all you first timers like me, want to know exactly what everything looks like because I know we have to now cut away. And I have never done that. So this is what the back looks like. I've been watching so many videos, but I didn't get that far. Cause I've been just trying to figure out what's the right backing for the right shirt, right materials. I'm cutting around it first, you know, to bring it down. I don't want to mess anything up. So I know I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna um, complete Because I can't have this, you know, just like that, right? It can't be, don't you have to finish the shirt off some kind of way. So I got to figure out what I'm supposed to do next. So I'm just cutting away all of that excess and I'm hoping that I'm doing it right. Because I've never, it's a cutaway. So I'm just cutting away. 
Um, now I'm assuming that I'm supposed to do the next step, but I'm gonna flip this for now. And um, so I gotta figure out what the next step is. Cause I didn't get that far. I didn't get that far. So, but that's how it looks on the back. And the machine ties it off. So you still have these little stragglies. I gotta get some scissors. I keep saying I have yet to order them. Okay, so this is how it looks in the front. I am pleased because, okay, so this is how it looks in the front. I'm just gonna cut away all these little stragglies. There has to be like, like a, like what's the best way to clean the shirts up? You know, with all the strings left. Cause you know, I wouldn't want to put a hole in the shirt. Is that all you do? Just cut it up close? All right, so you can even see the outline of that. So I really got to figure out how to, because I don't want that there like that. So what am I supposed to do? And I think the shirt, it's, it is a little crooked. I'm going to hold it up to myself to see, because it is a little, it's like slanted. But it's okay because it's in cursive, so I don't mind. So I did go back and just double check. You do leave it just like that. Um, you can iron it once you're finished just to see. Now, I, from what I can tell, there's no pulling, which is great. So some people I've seen in videos and I know they, um, they showed like pulling. I can't tell any pulling. So this is what the shirt looks like. So now when you have a crew neck, of course you wanna come about, you know, two inches down from the collar. So when you have a V-neck, you literally like want to start right up here. And I still see I have some stragglies I have to cut away because you know, the V-neck comes down lower. So you don't want to start your design two inches down lower. You want to start it, you know, pretty much like right after that little dip. So I think this looks really great. Of course it has like a little slight slant, but this is my first time. So for me being my first time, I think I did really good. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think because I know some of you know better than me. Um, I just don't like that I can see the backing because it is a white shirt. Um, so I don't know. What do you do about that? So I know they say that you're supposed to cut at least like two inches away from the design and I still have to go and clean all that up. But that's as good as I can get. You know, you want to leave some of it there. But um, I'm still new to all this. I'll become a pro sooner or later. But I just wanted to share my first, my very first time embroidering on a t-shirt. And other than just a thread break, when I took up that speed, everything worked out really great. So I am completely, completely pleased. Again, you wanna use cutaway when you're using shirts. I got this from Joann's on sale during Black Friday. Um, but I'll definitely be shopping around for the best prices. But I hope you guys like this video. Again, if you want this design, you can check it out on Creative Fabrica. The link will be down below in the description box. And of course, if you're interested at all in getting an embroidery machine, you can check out the link down below for all embroidery machines from Racoma. As always, thanks for watching. Happy holidays. And I will see you guys in the next video with more embroidery coming up soon. Take care. I believe I could, so I did. <laughs>